Two days of protests escalating into violence. The group Black Lives Matter requesting action from the police chief and mayor. A list of demands they have for city officials. Dozens of arrests this weekend from curfew violations, disorderly conduct and rioting. How police are prepared for those large crowds. I take a look at what triggered the chaos. Live, local, late breaking. This is KOCO 5 News at 5. Peaceful protests turning violent two straight nights in downtown Oklahoma City. Police trying to disperse protesters with tear gas. I'm Evan Onstott, live downtown where things are much quieter today. We have live team coverage tonight. And thank you for watching tonight at 5 o'clock. want to welcome you into the studio. I'm Jessica Shambach. Good evening to you. I'm Abigail Ogle. We have a team of reporters covering this from every angle. From new demands today by the Black Lives Matter OKC group to police who were prepared to fight back and a local couple who felt compelled to help clean up the mess left behind. The group Black Lives Matter organized the peaceful protest on Sunday afternoon. And late breaking today, they released a list of demands for Oklahoma City city leaders. KOCO's Patrina Adger joins us live tonight. She was there at that press conference. Patrina, they're calling on city leaders to take action immediately. Yes, Black Lives Matter say in light of the recent police violence in our country, including the death of George Floyd, they have a list of demands for city and state leaders who they say are responsible for the crisis here in our state. Now, Reverend T. Sheree Dickerson was here on the city steps. She's one of the leaders of the Black Lives Matter organization. She listed about a dozen of those demands, including wanting apologies from both Oklahoma City Police Chief Wade Gorley and Mayor David Holt, who who they say lack leadership that led to the aggressive actions by police toward protesters. They also want Gorley to resign. They want the immediate release of protesters arrested over the weekend for nonviolent offenses. They want the arrest and prosecution of the HOA president who blocked the delivery driver, Travis Miller Sr., from leaving a neighborhood after a delivery. And they also want to grant the clemency to be granted to Julius Jones, who's on death row. We are tired of not being listened to. We are tired of not being treated with the dignity and respect that they expect. And we are tired of them not doing their jobs because they are here to protect and serve, but they are protecting and serving their own interests and not those of Oklahoma. Also, one of the demands is to meet with Mayor David Holt. They say that is going to happen within the next 24 hours. We'll have more on their demands coming up tonight at 6 o'clock. Reporting live from downtown, Katrina Adger, KOCO 5 News. Back to you. And, and Petrina, Oklahoma City Police arrested 36 people over the two days of protests. And this just in, I was talking to Evan about this. He's there in the field. Authorities have put barricades back up. Let's go out to KOCO's Evan Onstott. He is live field anchoring for us tonight. Evan? Yeah, there are a number of barricades, guys, all over downtown Oklahoma City, specifically around the jail, which I'm looking at in front of me, as well as the police department, which is here behind me. This is where a lot of the confrontations came to a head yesterday between protesters and police. The barricades are back. Protesters are not, at least not yet. We don't know if there's going to be more protests tonight, but for now, it's quiet. You mentioned the arrests. Authorities arrested 25 people Saturday night, 11 more Sunday night. Now, we only have information right now about the people who were arrested Saturday night, those 25 people. Allegations there include rioting, disorderly conduct, even av aggravated assault and battery on a police officer. Now, of those arrested the first night, all but three are from Oklahoma. There's been some chatter and some discussion about out-of-state protesters coming in. The number's really not showing that. Again, three out of the 25 from out of Oklahoma, but the vast majority of these protesters who were arrested are from Oklahoma City. Now, the protests, the rallies, even the police presence, it all looked different going from Saturday night to Sunday night. We do have our Erin Bew, who uh, she's joining us live tonight. Erin, I know that you spoke to police. They said that they made some changes, but really uh, they said that they were prepared to respond if things took a negative turn. 
Absolutely. And one of the things they told me is the differences between Saturday and Sunday. One of those biggest differences were these barricades, like you were just mentioning. They just finished setting these up. Now they say these helped them stand their ground and it also protected anything from happening to the police headquarters. Some of the protests we've seen the past few days have been peaceful. But after dark, things seem to change. This is a law enforcement vehicle. This is a police car that is on fire. Oh my goodness. Whoa! But peaceful or not, hey. police were prepared on Saturday for the worst. We had officers on standby. We had officers deployed at that location at headquarters before the protest began. But after the violence lasted for hours, police added even more tools. We directed barriers around police headquarters, around some of the nearby buildings in preparation for another possible violent encounter. And Sunday, police say the protesters turned violent again. Throwing items at the officers. They also began discharging some fireworks. And shots were fired at one point near the officers. Several buildings were vandalized. So police responded with even more officers, tear gas, and non lethal weapons. They say the curfew really helped disperse the groups. Finally, able to push the protesters out of the curfew area. Now, Evan, exactly what you were saying earlier, police don't expect any protests or riots to happen just because they haven't heard of any organized ones happening tonight. Reporting live downtown Oklahoma City tonight, Aaron View, KOCO 5 News. Evan, back to you. Aaron, thanks very much. We want to dig deeper right now on those exact moments last night in which things went from a peaceful protest to something else when that moment between police and protesters became violent. Uh, KOCO's Dylan Richards has been following these protests the last couple of nights. He was here as it happened, and he joins us again live downtown today. Dylan, you watched it happen. We were rolling. Walk us through those moments where things took a very dramatic change. Uh, Evan, yeah, it was very different from when, when Chris Lee and I walked with protesters from the Capitol down to the police department. We're here at uh, Northwest 4th and Chartel. This is basically where demonstrators were pushed up to right at the time of that curfew. But before that, I want to show you the moment when they were down at Oklahoma City Police Headquarters. Uh, this is the moment uh, when things really, really took a turn. I want to show you some of our footage, and we'll show you some more of our footage throughout the evening. Just after 9 o'clock, we saw people throwing things at police, <laughs> including what looked like fireworks, <laughs> then scattered bangs. Eventually, police deployed tear gas, trying to back everyone up away from police headquarters. <laughs> Soon, Mayor David Holt would issue a curfew in a state of emergency for that area that would go into effect at 10 o'clock. Right at 10, most of the group turned around and moved north. Ended up here at 6th and Chartel, the edge of the curfew area. Around midnight, my photographer and I ended up behind the police line. You can see a final confrontation with police and the last of the demonstrators. They standing in the street yelling, police in a line. Then police started to back up down the street. Somebody threw something in their direction, and this is what happened. And that 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 last confrontation that we saw there, that one, uh, I, we know that some protesters in that area did not see anything thrown at police and felt very shocked that 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 all that started. We did see something thrown, but that gives you some of a sense of 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 your understanding of what happens based on your perspective. So we're just showing you our perspective uh, during that final confrontation there. Much quieter here downtown right now. We will be here watching anything that happens, bringing that to you, but much, much quieter downtown right now, Evan.
I completely agree. Dylan, thanks very much. Now, one of the big differences maybe from Saturday to Sunday nights was uh, manpower. I've actually changed positions now. Behind me is the Oklahoma County Jail here. A group set a jail transport vehicle on fire Saturday night. This was a van. Others threw bricks and other objects at the jail. So the sheriff called on other agencies to back them up last night. Sunday night, we were able to call in uh, different law enforcement agencies throughout central Oklahoma who came in and helped us. And basically, we just wanted to make sure that we were able to uh, protect the Oklahoma County Jail. Uh, Saturday night, we had and once again, we have a barricade up around the jail. We have some caution tape. They're going to hold a perimeter if protesters do show up once again. They're going to have that perimeter there to, to hold people back. Again, for the most part, yesterday, the protesters respected that space right there and did not, for the most part, go past it. Again, we'll see what happens as we move forward. Uh, no one breached the jail, by the way. That's an important point that we want to make clear. We're live here downtown. Abby, I'll send it back to you in the studio. All right, Evan, good information. Thank you. Now, right now on your KOCO app, we have continuing coverage of the local and the national protest happening in the aftermath of the death of George Floyd. All of that information on the top stories, your homepage right now on the app. And there is a curfew in effect for part of downtown Oklahoma City after protests turned violent two nights in a row. And Oklahoma City's mayor is taking part uh, in the afternoon march. What he says He's learning from this coming up. And while we are currently in a quiet stretch of weather, newest data this afternoon shows the tropics are now getting active. Coming up, the remnants of a tropical system, and it, when it will have the chance to impact you. Tonight at six. Oh, I'm here, guys. Protests in the metro intensifying overnight. Our crews on the front lines. These are our list of demands. Oklahoma City's Black Lives Matter now demanding change from police and city leaders. Tonight at 6. Less than five hours until the curfew starts for parts of downtown Oklahoma City for the second night in a row. You see the countdown here on your screen. We brought this to you as breaking news last night when it was put in place. And KSCO's Evan Onstott joining us live right now. Evan, Mayor David Holt saying this is because of the violent actions near police headquarters. Yes, Jess, and it's, I think it's an important note to mention the fact that the mayor says that he was actually, he signed that emergency declaration, that proclamation, after getting the request to do so to set this curfew up by the chief of police, uh, Chief Gourley, that he requested it, that saying that that was an important thing that was going to allow them to try to gain a handle on that situation. Uh, so I was on air last night as things escalated and we saw this order go into effect. So this curfew, as we saw last night, it once again will go from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. for part of downtown. We got a map on your screen right now. This is a relatively small area. And it only includes a few blocks of downtown. Yesterday, protesters continued to protest outside of that curfew area. And this is going to be in effect until Mayor Holt signs another proclamation to end it. In the past 24 hours, basically last night, Oklahoma City police arrested five people for violating that curfew. Now, Mayor Holt attended yesterday's Black Lives Matter protest and march. He shared this picture saying that he listened and he learned. As a a white guy from Northwest Oklahoma City uh, is I need to listen and I need to not react and I need to accept um, that even if I didn't consciously choose um, a world, you know, that has a great deal of injustice, I benefited from that injustice. And the mayor says that he wants to make sure people understand the peaceful events of yesterday's Black Lives Matter protest and march had nothing to do with the violence that happened later in the evening. But still, violence did happen and a lot of destruction. And there's many Oklahoma City uh, business owners right now dealing with damage to their buildings, uh, not just last night, but the night before that. KLCO's Christine Stanwood actually shows us some of that damage tonight near Northwest 5th and Lee. And she talked to a couple who came out to help clean up. We're just trying to help clean up the mess. Yeah, we don't know. We just saw them and we went to the protest yesterday. protest yesterday at the Capitol, and that was a good thing. And then we saw uh, we saw this on the news last night, and it was it was not a good thing. We didn't. It's not who. That's not what we want to represent. And it's, so. not, and it's not the focus that we want. 
the protests to be. Waking up at sunrise, Kay and James Pratt saw what was happening to their city and stepped up. We want change. We want to see things happen. This is not what we wanted to see happen. And so we decided to come help clean up a little bit. This isn't the only location doing cleanup. This morning we were at Valor Health where their office was broken into and looted. Also their parking lot across the street had at least five cars damaged with broken glass and dented roofs. The entire movement is, is not about this. This I believe was uh, opportunists looking for trouble and, and they created it. And uh, now these business owners have suffered. Our city is set back now, and that is not what um, Black Lives Matter is about. We just, we want to support them, and we want to get back to where we were and make, make a difference. Um, we want to be better. Now crews are here working to clean up the glass and also board up these windows. So much to do here in the metro. We're in downtown Oklahoma City. Christine Standwood, KOCO 5 News. And I could tell you being down here now, I was in studio last night as this was happening. Coming down here, we found more damage than I believe that we were able to see on television last night. And there's also a number of windows now and doors that are boarded up, not necessarily because they were damaged, but because I think a lot of property owners are now concerned that further damage could happen and they want to try to protect their property. We're live downtown. Back to you. KOCO's Evan Onstott reporting live for us. Evan, thank you so much. Coverage of this ongoing evolving situation continues, but we do want to get you over to Chief Meteorologist Damon Lane. We have now entered into a quiet stretch of weather, but we know out here in Oklahoma, it usually does not stay quiet for long. Tracking your next system coming in here in just a little bit. In the meantime, though, outside we go 82 degrees. Feels like 82 degrees. It has been a very warm day. It's been a bit of a muggy day as well, but right now temperatures in the low to mid 80s, pushing now 90 up in Alva. Temperatures are about to heat up in a pretty big way before the next chance of what I would say decent rain chances will move in. So tonight it is a mild night. All of us down to 65 degrees from Guthrie to Chandler to Sean, uh, Shawnee, Moore, Blanchard, Chickasha and Tuttle. That's a quiet night. And again, these temperatures really nothing out of the ordinary for now the beginning of June. So for tomorrow, Start the day in the mid 60s. We'll climb into the mid 80s for a high temperature. Tomorrow is going to be the last what I'm going to say uh, seasonal day. You can expect to find out here where temperatures are very close to normal for central Oklahoma. Low to mid 80s. Otherwise, as we go out across western Oklahoma, the 90s begin to climb into the forecast, and that's going to be a sign of what is to come in the days ahead. It is about to feel a lot more like July than the very beginning of June. So for tomorrow night from six o'clock going into the overnight hours, we're going to see a few isolated storms pop up out across the Oklahoma panhandle and drift into northwestern Oklahoma. The weather flow right now is just not very strong, so these storms will go up and they're pretty much just going to drift around. Any threat for severe weather is just about as low as you can expect. Also, we'll see a few storm chances down across southern and southeastern Oklahoma as we go into late tomorrow evening and into the overnight hours. Otherwise, here comes that early summer heat. This red line shows where we should be. We'll be there tomorrow, but otherwise Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, temperatures are climbing. We're going to be much closer to record highs as we go towards the end of the week than normal highs. So that's really saying something now this time of the year. When you're talking about close to record highs, even that can get pretty hot. So this is the time of the year where mid 90s, they start coming into the forecast. You would like not to see them in here this early, but uh, pretty much that's what the atmosphere is going to deliver us as we go later into the week. What we are watching now, though, is going to be this right here. This is Tropical Depression 3. It is already formed. It's going to be just this big mass of clouds that you see here from Cozumel as you make way just west of Tulum. It's not really going to move anywhere at all for the next five to six days. But some of the newest data does show that eventually it's going to have eyes on Oklahoma. So this is the this is the forecast that we have right now for this system literally for the rest of the week. It's just going to spin just right off the coast of Mexico. But then as we go into early next week, it begins to move more north and the remnants of it could very well make their way into Oklahoma. We'll watch that closely. We still have about seven days to go. So in the meantime, isolated storm chances for Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Friday, it is hot. Otherwise, watching the remnants of a tropical system. These would be the days that we need to really watch closely to see if it can make its way in here right now. 20% chance of storms related to that remnant of that tropical system. 
We get that rain in here, though. It can drop a lot of rain in a short amount of time. Something to watch closely. You know we'll be on top of it over the next seven days. And you're up to date with the latest first alert forecast. All right, Damon, thank you. We are honoring our Oklahoma nurses or Oklahoma heroes and want to take a look at who we're honoring today. Paula Baker. She works at OU Medical Center and she's been a nurse for more than 20 years. And the person who nominated her says that Paula puts herself at risk for her patients and is a hard worker who loves her job. If you would like to see the special nurse in your life who's worked so hard during this COVID-19 crisis, if you'd like to see them featured here on KSCO.com, head to our website to nominate them. As you continue to watch us at 5 o'clock, hundreds of thousands of signatures just delivered to the state capitol today. What state question you could see very soon on your ballot? Escalating protests nationwide, prompting Amazon to make some changes. The company says it's scaling back deliveries and also changing routes in areas that have seen violence. Amazon tells Bloomberg that the temporary safety measures are in place in several cities, including in Los Angeles and Chicago. Drivers were quickly recalled from those cities on Saturday night. Back here at home, sentencing for nonviolent crimes in Oklahoma could change. Today, you see the group here. They're called the Yes on 805. It turned in more than 260,000 signatures. They gave us these pictures in this video here. State question 805 would end the use of repeat sentence penalties for nonviolent crimes. The Secretary of State now has to make sure all of these signatures are legit, how they have to be verified. If the group has enough signatures. Governor Kevin Stitt will then decide whether it will be placed on your ballot. What about fixing bridges here in the Metro? The new project just announced today for an ongoing problem area. I bet you've experienced it. Replacing six bridges along I-40 in Dell City. Well, today ODOT officials approved a project to improve these structurally deficient bridges. And that project is expected to cost nearly $80 million. The commissioners also approved a project to repave an area of I-44 between I-40 and I-240. New tonight at 5 o'clock, the Children's Hospital at OU Med will be providing free lunch to kids this summer. It actually started today. It goes through July 31st. They will serve free lunch to all kids under the age of 18 during the week. Hospital officials say they will be taking extra precautions when serving these meals, including not letting any kids eat inside. Coming up tonight at 6 o'clock, we'll have more live team coverage on the aftermath of the protests over the weekend and the new demands from the Black Lives Matter Oklahoma City group. Um, the change they're asking for from police and city leaders as well. We'll have that for you when you join us tonight at 6. World News with David Muir is up next.